Coming up on this episode of the Model 3 Owners Club Show. Happy birthday, Model 3 serial number one arrives. Yeah, and we have some more Model 3 and Tesla news for you. And of course, EV news from around the globe. And of course, mailbag time. Don't forget, we'll be right back. Well, welcome back. My name is Trevor Page. I'm Kenneth McCor. Welcome. So what do we have on tap today, Ken? Well, we have to start with a celebration. You know, we it's serial number one. Hey! Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> we'll make some noise. Hopefully we didn't blow any ears. <laughs> now we have to sing happy birthday too, Trev. So do we? You're a musician. You should have a voice somewhere ready. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, birthday dear number, number one. one. <laughs> happy <laughs> birthday to you. All right. It's a big day here uh, in the Model 3 Honors Club show, of course. As you know, now that we've sung and, and I think we've probably turned some viewers away from us. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. But July 9th was the release date and the first day of uh, rolling off the production line for the Model 3. Serial number one. That's right. Yeah. Elon gets the first one. Now, just as a bit of a backstory to this car. Um, so the story goes that uh, during a board meeting, the first person to put down a full payment. Now, board meeting, we're talking about Tesla board meeting. Yep. First person to put down full payment on the uh, on a new car gets dibs on the first car. And that goes to Ira, Iron Price, who's a Tesla board member. Mm -hmm. And as a nice gift for Elon on his uh, 46th birthday, he uh, relinquished his first position to Elon. So yeah. Elon gets the very first car. And in his usual tradition, it's black, black. because he got the first uh, Roadster, which was black. Mm -hmm. He got the first Model X, which was black. Mm -hmm. The first Model S actually went to uh, Steve Jurvetson, right. who's right. another board yeah. member. I forgot he did, did not get the first one. Yeah, so yeah. he gets, so Elon gets uh, uh, serial number one, and it's black, of course. And Ira said that he's getting serial number two. So, and uh, I do believe I have a couple of pictures that might be of serial number two or three, but I, we haven't uh, been able to confirm that. But uh, they're Sneaky. on the Tesla, yeah, the, at the Tesla factory. So it's interesting. <laughs> so. So definitely a big day. I mean, we waited uh, over a year since the the reveal in March uh, 31st of 2016 to mm -hmm. the first production. So as we've been saying all along, they are well on track to start producing when they said they were going to. And we're glad yeah. to see that they have. Yeah. So, now, but but the hard part really starts now because now yes. they have to ramp up production. So just yep. because they produce the first one or two cars doesn't mean you're going to get yours instantaneously. They still have to ramp. These things have to start slow. As I said before in the last show, you don't just flip a switch and make five thousand cars a week. It doesn't work like that. So they still have a lot of work to do. You can bet that this car is going to be gone over with a fine tooth comb, mm -hmm. either by Elon himself mm -hmm. or the engineers, to make sure everything's really good. They'll probably do some more trial runs with the car. Yep. Um, doesn't mean that they will stop testing some of the release candidates as well they'll still be you know driving some of those around just to make sure everything's still good makes but sense. i think most of the focus is really is on the machinery inside the factory the machine that makes the machine so to speak yeah. uh to really get ramp up production mm -hmm. now as they've said of course that they're hoping to build the first 30-ish cars by the end of the month because mm -hmm. the release or the uh, delivery party is on uh, 28th of july yep. in fremont and we're hoping to attend so please. if tesla's watching please, please, please. we're hoping We'd we love would to love go. to go. <laughs> Please send us an invite. And if you do get an invite, if you're one of those lucky ones and have room as a plus one, send us an email. Let us know. We'd really we need a backup it. plan just in case. Yeah, we really appreciate that. Absolutely. Um, so Tesla's also said that the uh, production ramp is going to start a little slow, of course, as expected. So they're looking to produce about 100 uh, yep. next month in August, mm -hmm. ramping up to over 1,500 sometime in September. And then ultimately reaching um, about 20,000 cars mm -hmm. total in December. That's about 5,000 cars a week. So the real S-curve, that real push ramp is really going to be October, November. So uh, yeah, they haven't really given any numbers for October, November, but that's where we'll see some somewhere between 1,500 a month and 20,000 a month. So I think it really puts us in that scale. position where we were predicting somewhere in the vicinity of about 50,000 cars total produced by the end of the year. It looks like yep. it's pretty close. Pretty close. We might be high, actually, with that number. And it's interesting you bring that up because I know we've talked about Roger's book, Getting Ready for Model 3. Yeah. We've been advertising that for quite quite a long time from our friends at EV Annex. Um, I just went back today before we went on air just to double check his um, figures on his predictions. Mm -hmm. And again, this is over, this is about a year old. So I think this came out probably May or June of last yeah. year. And he's predicted in 2017 from a likely perspective, 25,000 Model mm -hmm. 3s and optimistic 40. So Roger 
hats off to you. You're right on mark. Uh, at least it seems right now you're right on the mark with your prediction from a year ago of those numbers. And we're we could be slightly high. I know that Ben, you know, was saying eighty thousand ish, mm-hmm. which is going to be I think way high. I don't think they're going to get there. Well, those were predictions based on be what nice. Tesla actually said right. originally. But of course, yeah. now with the production ramp, um, you know, we actually have some numbers yeah. to play with now. It's a little yeah. closer. But yeah, yeah, all it means is that some people are actually going to get this car, not just employees, but the actual public will That's be right. able to get a car sometime towards the end of the year. And that's exciting. And there'll be quite a few of those because I'm not sure how many are for employees of SpaceX, Tesla, board members, and all that VIPs, but a few thousand at most? Uh, Maybe five, I would, six thousand? I'd pro- yeah. No, probably around 4,000. 4,000? 4, yeah, okay. Somewhere in there. So there's going to be a lot of people, you know, maybe twenty to 25,000 of our viewers out there that are going to get some Model 3s by for as a Christmas present. It's all exciting. It's going to be Looking exciting. Looking forward to seeing so, the car. It's going to be great. So again, good news on that. And for those that are going to be getting their cars, um, the design studio, they should start seeing some information on the design studio. We have not seen anything go on live yet. Mm -mm. There's been some talk about it. There's been speculation. There's been some renderings, things like that, about what it could look like, Mm -hmm. what it could offer. But I know that you've done a video and you've talked about that, but maybe we can just, you know, again, uh, recall to folks what that's all about. Well, uh, I want to caution people not to expect the design studio necessarily open immediately on the 28th of July because, again, the initial production and then uh, on the 29th for the delivery event, they're looking at about 30 cars mm-hmm. somewhere in there yep. and 100 in August. So my opinion is what's the real rush? They could actually call those people because I get that comment a lot on Twitter and, of course, some of the videos is like, you know, why couldn't they just open the configurator? And I mm-hmm. think that for initial production run right like that, you know, because of the options they've said, that won't, they won't have a lot of options. Choose your wheels, choose your color. It's going to be very simple from a... Yeah. So initial, for those people, mm-hmm. they could just, you know, email them directly or just phone them and say, you know, here's the price, pick your color, what do you want? And off mm-hmm. you go. So I don't think there's any rush. I should mention, and I'm not saying the Model 3 is going to be like this, but if you, you look back on history, the last production uh, product launch they had was the Model X. Now the Model X... Uh, the design studio didn't open for the Model X people, the signature holders, uh, didn't open for about two weeks mm-hmm. and uh, after the delivery event. And it didn't open to the general public uh, until about seven months later because oh. they had a lot of production run problems on the, on the Model X initially. Now, I'm feeling better about the Model 3, but don't expect it to open right away. It may take a week. It, it could be that day, but it may take mm-hmm. a week, two weeks. It could be a month. So... And Tesla is not in the uh, in the habit of uh, um, on stage at a delivery event to tell you the pricing and tell you all the options. They just basically talk about the car, the specs, and, and all the, the, the general stuff. specs of the car. Mm-hmm. But they don't mm-hmm. talk about here. You know, oh, you're going to be able to uh, uh, you know glass roof, and here are the three different wheels. They don't do that. Right. So that stuff is really going to show up in the configurator. Right. So the event is just going to be a party. It'll be live streamed. To, you know, have a good time, see the car, get a chance to see the interior and stuff, but don't expect to see all pricing initially. I just want to caution people that's all. Now you were, you did a video just a little while ago about what you thought could be the new configurator for the Model 3 based on, on bundles. And that again makes perfect sense to keep the choices simple and to bundle popular options together to make it easier for people down the road to pick yeah, up. Yeah, if you haven't seen the video, I'll put a link mm-hmm. in the show description. You can go look at it. And there's a, spe- a, a special way of getting at the i couldn't get that to work but w- well i'll me, show but, you later yeah. <laughs> um but, yeah. but it allows you to get at the new model s or model mm-hmm. x configurator and uh and play with it i believe that this is kind of leaning towards what A we may see for the for yeah the precursor three. for the model three Good. and it's really towards uh more bundling and i got a lot of flack from that back i think mm-hmm. it was uh last year about seven months ago i did a video on the possibilities of getting Model 3 to production. And I was basically saying that they could do bundles and I got a lot of flack for it. But if you look at this new configurator, that's exactly what they're doing on the Model S and the Model X is giving you more uh, bundles. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't custom configure. You can do that. It's just not quite as obvious. So the price Um, is right. If if it's money's no problem, you can do whatever you want for the most part. Now on that simple though, to start from a design studio perspective, we did talk about colors. Uh, but we have a little bit more to add on that. There looks like there's a new color that just popped out yesterday. Yeah, we just spotted one. Uh, midnight silver. For So for those of you who are looking for the gray or the sil- or what Tesla calls midnight silver on the Model S, we finally got one spotted. So it's a little darker than what the silver alpha was running. Oh, That's yeah. No, no. Right, this right? is definitely a, a dark a dark yeah. gray. Mm-hmm. And uh, But it was the one color that we hadn't seen on any of the release candidates That's running right. around. And we finally got a picture of it. So... It kind of completes kind of the circle. Now, the only other two, there are two more colors available on the Model S. One's called Obsidian Black and the mm-hmm. other one's a Pearl White. And we still haven't mm-hmm. uh, had 
proper confirmation we've actually cited those yes so those may or may not make it but at least the silver's there and i know a lot of people on the forum are super happy about that because they're really looking for that color. there was a picture i saw that had it looked like the white was a combination of regular white and pearl white like the bumper was pearl white or something like that so they could be messing around with that and just have it announced so we don't know well that. the easiest thing obviously with the model 3 is make it available mm -hmm. in the same colors as the model mm -hmm. s or model x now yeah. they could be uh, holding a couple of back we mm -hmm. may still see a special color for those people that right. stood in line type of thing i i don't know but it's it's nice to Makes see, sense. yeah, the silver finally make, or not the silver, but sorry, the midnight silver, which is the dark gray, finally mm -hmm. make it because, yeah. you know, a lot of people are really looking forward to that. So. It's a classy looking color. Mm -hmm. Looks nice. The picture wasn't yeah. the greatest, but we thank uh, the viewer that put that up there. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure you'll, you'll recognize I'll, it. I'll back. link to it in the bottom as well. Uh, so, and the other confirmation we got was that Tesla did actually confirm getting patents for those three wheels that were designed. Mm -hmm. um, and those are V spoke, and that's the one that's got the black logo insert. Yeah. I personally like that one. Yeah, the that's, best, a, that's really nice. There's the arrow and also. So the wind turbine wheels and those are so these should be part of those options and in we're guessing 19 and 20 inch formats well we do Not know 100% that sure about yeah that. well 18 and 19 have been confirmed mm -hmm. on the release candidates i 18, should mention okay. that the wind turbine one that's the only time we saw that was on the reddish orange the red, prototype yeah. or the shell i should say at the reveal yeah, the event mule, yep. yeah so we haven't <laughs> actually seen those release candidates so we may only see these two wheel options and one will be the standard uh 18 inch and then the other one will be a, a 19 option so yeah well, it's definitely going to be some some choices for for uh, a reservationists to make once they go. Well, yeah, there'll be there'll be third party options order. too. If you Absolutely. don't like these, you can always yeah. just buy the basic and then just upgrade to something else if you mm -hmm. want. Yeah, they don't. I haven't looked at their bolt pattern, but it's nothing out of the world, right? I think there are. I don't. Are, I don't think so. But yeah, I, it wheels would... that you can get for them. Yeah, good. So it's exciting news. Now there was uh, an article that came out. Um, Fred put this out mm -hmm. on. Uh, Electric. electric. Yep. And thanks, Fred, for what you do. And it was just interesting that it was just some pictures and some discussions about the alpha versus what we're seeing in production now. And as we've been saying from the start, what you're seeing at that, uh, the initial reveal, 90 plus percent of what you're seeing is going to be coming off the production line, right? You've been turning blue in the face saying this all the time. <laughs> I've been following you saying, yes, that's exactly It's correct. how Tesla it's, operates. You know, that's how they operate. So yeah. get used to this. You know, We talked about HUDs and all this other stuff that people were hoping for. But what you saw in that initial reveal, 90 plus percent of it is what's coming off the line. And this article talks about that. It just kind of compares some of the minute changes that have happened uh, in the design for that. So look, you know, obviously we saw the front end slightly sharpened a little bit more. So it's not as flat mm -hmm. to, and, and the rear bumper possibly slightly extended and i think that's part of their commitment to lower the drag coefficient because they talked at their release the initial reveal last year about getting a 0.21 drag coefficient and that makes that's important if you're highway traveling and you want to get a little bit better range the more aerodynamic the better right from a range perspective so that kind of makes sense um the production seems a bit less more a little bit more refined and, the, and it does look more tesla-ish i think the way that they've got the s and the x designed a little bit less boxy than the alpha um, and there are also some small things that were pointed out like the door handles seem a little longer on the production versus the alphas um, the wheel wells are slightly more accentuated um, something about fog lights uh, you know you can see where they go and so on so uh, i mean i know pictures you want to talk about that you can't <laughs> i have my own opinion i have my right? own opinion about this yep okay the first thing you'll notice is that um what they use for you, comparison this behind us now, yeah so, yeah. so <laughs> what they use for comparison on on these photos is the side uh, view that was taken of Elon serial number one parked right. outside the Tesla factory. And the other one was the photograph taken by uh, Motor Trend last right. year at the Gigavac. I think they were basing it on the wheel rims. That's as, as the starting exactly. point, right? The mm -hmm. problem with this is you have to be very careful because these are real photographs. I know other people have compared against some of the digital renderings that Tesla's right. done. Mm -hmm. But the thing about photography is that lenses on cameras distort things. So They're you can't the measure these things and say, oh, it's right. changed by five inches or this yeah. or that because There's the like, lenses yeah. distort things. My eyes will see something a little bit different than your eyes. Same kind of concept. It, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I would very much caution people to read too much into these photographs mm -hmm. because of that fact. Mm -hmm. Now, unless you're an expert and you knew exactly which lenses they used on these, if you're an expert in Photoshop, uh, Photoshop has some... Uh, lens distortion or anti-distortion oh, cool. filters you can apply but you need to know exactly what lenses so without that without that knowledge of what lenses they use you cannot uh, compare these a hundred percent so having said that um, I still believe that uh, all of the changes that Tesla has done on the Alpha to production cars have been minor, minor. little refinements Correct. they have not stretched the car five inches they haven't done big things because they just not enough time for that 
uh, you know, they made this pretty clear last year at the uh, test drive events, at the reveal event, that this was production intent. All they had mm-hmm. to do is just little nips and tucks on this car. Mm-hmm. So minor little things. So again, it's nice to see this. I, I like, you know, I appreciate the effort that goes into yeah. it, but um, yeah, I don't look at these. I look at the, I've seen the alpha prototype. If that's what they go to production with, I'm perfectly happy with it, mm-hmm. you know pending some small yeah. little details. Do you keep and saying it looks better in real person than it does on any picture you'll or on film? See. You'll see. <laughs> you'll see very soon. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But an interesting article, and thanks for that, uh, yeah. Fred. It was just nice to, to have some, something to talk about. And there sure. were some small changes. Also, which was interesting about the Model 3 is that it's now, it's eligible to get on the North American 2018 Car of the Year list for potential awards. And um, this is significant because it's the first time right now in the awards history that Detroit automakers do not have a car in their running. Tesla is really the only American manufacturer uh, represented in this in that particular category it's not the suv crossover it's your standard everything else that's not suv mm-hmm. or crossover or pickup truck category and the model 3 is eligible for that again this is for the next model year coming out so they're 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 a little bit futuring um the eligibility is new vehicles or substantially updated and i think that's the key there really isn't anything new coming from the guys in detroit or anything substantially updated the real big new vehicle that came out was uh, the Chevy Bolt, which won last year's, mm-hmm. uh, uh, this category last year. So it's great to see um, Tesla, you know, being mentioned and being considered for this kind of an award. And they have won Car of the Year before, right? That's right. Motor correctly. Trend's Car of the Year was in 2013. They mm-hmm. won that with the Model S. With the Model S. Yeah. yeah. It would not be unprecedented, uh, unprecedented for them to win again. Um, I believe that the Model 3 really does represent something very special here. Mm-hmm. Now, whether they actually bestow this on a second EV for a second year in a row, we'll see. It would be nice. It would be nice. Um, but uh, yeah, I hope they win. It would be really nice. It would be some good vindication that these are these are real things. Well, one thing to take away from this is, again, it just shows the fact that the North American guys, still, they're still not you know breathing the EV air. They're not drinking the Kool-Aid that we keep putting out there. <laughs> Um, and it shows in something like this. I mean, you know, and we'll talk a little bit more later on the show. And we've been talking about this for a long time about, you know, Mercedes and BMW and all these other manufacturers that are going diving deep into the EV game. They know it's a game changer and they have to keep up. And the North American manufacturers are still kind of not really getting it. And this is just another little tidbit to look at and and. Mm-hmm. and associated with that so i mean i you know uh, guys that are listening out there you know please get into the game i mean evs are here they're growing they're here to stay you've got to get with the program if you're going to be competitive in this marketplace but uh, good news now obviously we we get emails we get uh, comments and concerns from people that are concerned that with all these model threes they're going to start being delivered over the next few months that how are the service centers and and sales and everybody going to keep up with this we have discussed this before in the Many show times, but yeah. but more information has come out in the last week or so that tesla is continuing to beef up their service and support um, that's why the first model threes that 30 plus a couple of hundred plus up to maybe four thousand as you're saying your estimate are to tesla and spacex employees because they really want to have that small footprint of, of of cars out there that they can control to a point that they can catch any early issues and 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 have q a concerns and fix that correct and mm-hmm. i think they did that with the s and x as well correct yeah yeah mm-hmm. yeah so it's their way of kind of just putting it out there in a little bit of a controlled environment see how it goes any QA, they can do the tweaks they need to do, and then they start blasting away with. with well, the also coming into that too is because they're also going to be adding uh, what is it, 350 mobile rangers mm-hmm. to assess. Right. Because let's face it, uh, the thing with an EV is you need considerably less maintenance than you use yep. a gas car, and most of the issues that you would fix are either done with an over over the air um, update, yeah. or they're minor little fixes. So I think over 90 percent of the fixes can be done just with the OTA yeah. updates alone. Yeah. So mm-hmm. John McNeil, who's uh, head of global sales and service at hey, Tesla. John has been putting a lot of effort into his teams and stuff to really uh, boost yep. uh, the mobile ranger service because they can come to you rather than you come into the service centers. Mm-hmm. And logically, if you think about it, it's the only way they can actually do this because they just don't have enough time 
or resources to actually uh, expand the network. Physically build it out. Yeah, at Mm -hmm. this point, especially with the Model 3 coming online. So Mm -hmm. this is, uh, might be a stopgap, but might be a long-term solution to some of this problem. It'll be interesting though, too, because, you know, know, all the mobile trucks right now are gasoline. So eventually when they have a pickup uh, or some other vehicles that electrified, they'll be able to replace that fleet with their own electrified service vehicles too. I know that's been a bit of a comment for some people. So I forgot about that. (laughs) Exactly. I mean, we know that they are trying to add more stores and restructure structure of course some of the stores and service locations to handle more volumes and the video I think that they just released about the increasing their service capacity threefold worldwide so making things easier self check-ins all this kind of stuff so that your experience if you end up needing to go to a service center will be a lot quicker and it'll be an easy experience to handle yeah. and beefing up their loaner pool in case they need to keep your car for a while yeah if you haven't seen the video i'll put mm-hmm. a link in the show yeah, description you can watch it it's, it's quite interesting Absolutely. being able to uh you know plan your yeah. um uh, book your service yep. appointment right on the main screen so yeah That's they're right. taking things in a different direction it's good it's so good to see that 100 plus new service centers and they're hiring 1400 new technicians so if you're interested contact us oh yeah 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 let us know how it goes for sure uh now obviously to keep up with the model three production uh, numbers the gigafactory one has to be humming and has to be going and it seems like all the reports that we're reading recently it's humming away uh, they, they of course produce the battery packs and the drive units for the model three at the gigafactory one we're calling it one because we know that there's going to be more built oh, now yeah. in reno nevada and uh, that everything is in place in that factory to support the uh, up to 5,000 cars or even beyond per week by the end of the year. So they are they won't be a holdback if on those production numbers. And, and we, we haven't heard anything, by the way, negative or contrary to, to the supplier mandate of July 1. Uh, there's no news come out to say, hey, these suppliers haven't made the mandate or can't have our fall behind. So that I think no news is good news on that front, right? Well, uh, it's, I don't think it's something that Tesla would really want to report on. They, they, wouldn't, they but... have said in the past that if there's any shortfalls, they're fully prepared to make those parts. Mm-hmm. So there's mm-hmm. a possibility if right. there are any shortfalls that they're probably doing that, but that's not something they would probably want to advertise anyway. Exactly. But I, but something like that would probably leak out, though, I think, somehow. So yeah. because we haven't heard anything yet, that's good news. And uh, uh, just on the Gigafactory 1, including all the levels right now, the factory currently stands at 4.9 million square feet, and that's only 30% of what it's going to end up being. It's still so going to be massive. Man, it's nice to see big, this picture. Big place, yeah. Uh, you know, the parking lot's full. It's full. And of course, that parking lot's going to go away eventually because they're going to keep building that factory Mm -hmm. uh, into those parking lot areas. So they're going to have to build more parking around. Or they're going to build something up. uh, I don't know. I don't know. (laughs) Interesting. So yeah, so it doesn't seem like any slowdowns from a gig factory perspective, and that's that's good to hear. Well, no gig factory, no Model 3, so this is critical. Very critical. Now, we, uh, of course, we, we keep talking about supercharger and EV charger growth on every show that just keeps getting more and more articles and news, which is great because a lot of the concerns that viewers come up to us and write to us and talk to us about when we see them is, you know, gee, all these cars are going to come out. If I want to charge, I'm going to be able to find somewhere to charge. Well, yeah, you know, uh, we know that Tesla is increasing their supercharger network and they are on track to get their 10,000 supercharger uh, uh, network installed by the end of this year. They've just hit over 6,000 worldwide right now. And that supercharger stations, that's not number of stalls or number of actual okay. endpoints. That's just the stations themselves. Mm-hmm. And they've, they're going to grow their con- uh, destination charges to uh, over 15,000 as well by the end of the year to supplement that. And they want to increase the number of stalls per station. Right now it's currently 6.7, but I, I forget. It's going to be into the double digits. Uh, they want to get their averages. And you talked about, I think, one station you saw an article that's going to have 40 stalls and... Yeah, it looks like, uh, yeah, Fred was able to dig up a couple of uh, locations uh, where uh, they're fulfilling the promise that Elon said at the last um, uh, financial call. Uh, where they will be adding amenities to these. So mm. these are a couple locations. It looks like they're going to be about uh, 40. Probably California to start, I guess. Yeah, well, so. I, 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 you know, yeah, I don't have it in front of me, unfortunately. I think but, so, the high yeah. traffic. But they're looking mm. at uh, 40 uh, supercharging stalls in this one location and amenities. So mm. things like a little snack bar and restaurants, and little rest areas, that, that type of thing. So there I think that's go. pretty critical. And now, of course, keep in mind, they're not going to do this everywhere. These are probably mm. going to be put in the most highly trafficked area yeah. so you know california makes sense because there's some corridors slot down machines there. who knows put the table <laughs> keep people around a while <laughs> in the right counties right yeah exactly yeah. 
<laughs> well, good. And uh, to to add to the supercharger growth, there was an announcement that South Korea, uh, of course, recently just got some store openings, a couple of stores, and they're now installing 14 superchargers by the end of the year as well. So they're going to have a network. And we talked about Australia and all these other countries that are growing. It's so growing like crazy. It's happening. So all good news. Mm -hmm. Now, interesting news that I picked up about, and we've, we've commented and reported on this before about the... Um, the global fleet miles that, that Tesla tracks and gets information on, that it's now reached over 5 billion electric miles, or that's about 8 billion kilometers for us metric com uh, countries out there. And that's just with over, you know, a little bit more than 200,000 vehicles on the road. So not a whole lot of vehicles by comparison to other manufacturers. Uh, we do know that, that, will, that those miles will grow exponentially, will continue to grow, especially when the Model 3 comes mm -hmm. out. They're probably going to surpass the S and X fleet, you know, within the next year or so, oh, yeah, or a couple years as far as miles. Yeah. But I wanted to ask you, Trevor, maybe you can relate this to viewers out there. What does this really mean? Like, what are they tracking and, you know, what, why is this important uh, to talk about? I think what it boils down to a couple of facts, beside the fact that people that own the Teslas like to drive them. So that kind of accounts for so they're racking up so many miles on this. Type and of you drove one, so yeah. you, you know, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, what, the, what we're looking at here is it's important for on two fronts, the way I see it, is one is the uh, training. The, uh, of the autopilot version mm -hmm. two hardware systems that are that's on all right. the cars that have been coming out of the factory and of course on the model three because that helps accelerate their efforts to train the system so that they can reach their master plan part two which mm -hmm. is an, some kind of autonomous fleet where you could earn money so that's part of that plan the second one really comes down to um, really exercising and being able to build a very robust uh, drivetrain on the cars because you know they've said many times before that their their aspirationally is to build um, uh, a drivetrain on the Model Three and for future cars that would last a million miles. Yep. So and you can't do that without exercising these vehicles because you can only mm -hmm. test for so long because right. simulations only go so far. So, uh, yeah, I think it really represents that. And that's good because, you know, for those who have been following Tesla for a long time know that Tesla's had some problems with their drivetrains on the earlier Model 3s. Yep. They've since fixed that now. Um, you know, oh, the report, S's, you mean? Uh, oh. Yeah, sorry, on the S's. Mm -hmm. And uh, those reports have largely died off. You still right. get, you know, the odd one and stuff like that. It's been mm -hmm. pretty quiet mm -hmm. for the most part. So, uh, you know, all that data that they've taken from those repairs and the experience that they've got from repairing those vehicles now has gone into the new drivetrain on this. So mm -hmm. it, it's, it's encouraging. And uh, like I said, it, it just helps with, you know, uh, designing for the future. So, so the more cars that are out there, the more data that's collected, you know, again, the, the more stuff they can do, the more efficiencies and more enhancements. Yeah, the thing you have to remember stuff, is, so. is, is, as mm -hmm. we said before, Tesla does their own service. There's mm -hmm. no third party. Mm -hmm. So when you bring in the vehicle and they do diagnostics on it, it goes right straight back to head office. Yeah. They know immediately. It's not lost yeah. in some kind of quagmire of dealerships right. and stuff. So it's so that's why they're able to get this stuff and do these improvements fairly quickly. I think the only subs they have are like body work and that kind of stuff. Yeah, they yeah, yeah. But the actual drivetrain, they're the only ones mm -hmm. that are authorized to work on yeah. it. If we continue to talk about what's going on in other parts of the world, we've talked about Norway a few times, and we, we've got to bring them up again. Our hats off to Norway. They are still leading the EV adoption from a per capita perspective. No surprise there. They, in fact, they've reached a record 42% of uh, total new car sales are EVs, which is uh, outstanding for them. And they have a goal to hit 100% new car sales uh, to be zero emission vehicles by 2025. Um, Just a few months ago, it was 37%, yeah. and now they're already at 42 so we know they have some incentives, which of course are helping, but it's just, it's a culture. It's just, and they've got infrastructure and they've got a lot of the right things going on yeah. there to, to spur that Send on. Send an example for the rest of the world to follow. Absolutely. Uh, of course, France, uh, there was a big announcement that, that uh, a lot of news covered about them announcing the ban on petrol diesel cars by, by 2040. At the latest. Now, what this means is, it's they're not going to they're not going to ban anybody driving those cars in the country. It just means they're not, they're going to ban the selling of new cars, uh, both uh, petrol or gas and diesel by that date. They're going to start phasing it out slowly over time, and uh, part of that phase out is to offer additional incentives for EVs, which a lot of countries are doing, of mm -hmm. course. Now, analysts predict worldwide that 50 to 54 percent of new car sales will be electric by 2040. I think we had this discussion just before the show started, and we think it's going to be a lot sooner than 2040, most likely because of cost parity. And what we mean by that is when the cost of EVs come down to be parity to a, what a, you know a Honda Civic ICE car, you know compact car versus an EV pure EV compact car, when those prices are the same, 
uh, I think you'll see EV adoption go through the roof. And I think it's a lot sooner than 2040. I'm thinking within 10 years, maybe less, like yeah. by 2025 or even less than that. Just the way we're seeing this momentum build up, this hockey stick that you keep talking about, you know, that curve where mm -hmm. infrastructure is now, uh, incentives, government legislation, regulations, all these things that are spurring EV adoption, you know, talk about China, all these different countries that are now getting into the game that realize we got to do something. Yeah. Well, it's 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 two part. Um, one is the tipping point on the manufacturing side, and that's mm -hmm. fast approaching because yep. all the manufacturers have announced some kind of electrified program. Yep. The other part Almost is okay. yeah. The other part is the is the tipping point as far as the public's perception, and that yep. won't really happen until there's more product on the market. Yep. So that's why this number of 2020 keeps coming out. Mm -hmm. We're going to have more cars by 2020. Yep. So once that arrives, and of course, you know, as you mentioned, the cost parity comes down. Uh, that's when things will really start to snowball. And bat, you know, advancement in battery technology are helping to drive those costs down. You yeah, know? that I mean, is the you know, number. Elon's goal: he wants to get to 100 kilowatt uh, hour pricing. Yeah. You know, 100 dollars per kilowatt hour. I think uh, something along those lines. Mm -hmm. And you know, when that cost parity hits, so instead of having to look at a financial incentive as a reason for for somebody to get into an EV, you won't because we know those incentives won't be around forever. Yeah. The price has to come down where it makes sense. And yeah. If I'm looking at a twenty-five thousand dollars Civic or twenty-five thousand dollar, you know, two hundred fifty mile range Bev, uh, it's a no no brainer. Right? Yeah. But infrastructure to support that low maintenance, yeah. Right, why wouldn't that? Yeah. There's a conversion. So, uh, mm -hmm. It's a conversion of several different factors, yeah. and once they all converge to this one point, yeah. at some point we don't know when, but it's going to be a little sooner, I think, than twenty forty. Really yeah. yeah, and that's good. one of the reasons we report on you know other manufacturers and things going around in other parts of the country, uh, of the globe. Partially because we have viewers everywhere, so we yeah. thank our viewers for writing into us saying, "Hi, I'm from Indonesia, or I'm from Norway, or I'm from Scotland, wherever." Yeah. We really appreciate getting to understand where our viewers are and, and what what's important to you. So that's why we continue to report on that. Yeah. Um, there was a, a study that I just read recently uh, through an article by a Swiss research institute called EMPA, and they determined that gas engines, so if you need some more motivation to switch to, to electric or talk <laughs> people into switching to electric, here's a good article to read, that gas en engines are even dirtier than we initially first thought so, and that EVs are now even cleaner. And they've looked at a lot of an uh, analysis to, uh, dealing with direct fuel injection systems, and that they tend to emit... Um, 10 to 100 times more particulates than modern diesel engines. And modern diesel engines are fairly efficient and fairly clean. You know, the older diesels, right, you could see that there were problems. But the new modern diesels are, are supposed to be pretty good, taking diesel gate aside, yeah. you know, from that perspective, the average. Um, so looking at all those, though, uh, EVs still produce less emissions when you factor in, you know, the food chain from where an EV comes from, the, the sourcing of the batteries, the manufacturing, the carbon footprint up to that point, and then, of course, the charging infrastructure to support it, even when you factor in getting electricity from coal-generated uh, electricity plants today. EVs are still a better solution than direct fuel injection. And I remember when direct fuel injection came out, it was kind of, oh, this is, you know, better, more efficient, and cleaner. So these studies have actually proven that it's the other way. And that uh, even in the U.S., uh, where you know we, we hear the current administration wanting to revitalize the coal uh, industry as an example for power generation in the USA, even with that, that it's still cleaner energy uh, than, a tip, than driving typical ICE vehicle uh, today in the USA. So interesting study. There was a lot of other stuff, and it was a pretty big study, but I encourage you, if you're interested in, in, in that kind of stuff, to, to check it out. Don't forget, folks, an EV is the only car that can run on renewables. Can't do that with a gasoline car. That so. is correct. Unless you have a gas pump in your garage. A physical gas pump. Who has that? Uh, who has that? Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> but we all have a plug in our garage yeah. or, or inside of the house. Mm -hmm. uh, more news uh, staying in the U.S. Now, Oregon and uh, the West Coast has been the leader in EV adoption, of course, in, in the United States. Uh, they are now offering additional EV rebates to continue uh, their spur and growth in EV adoption. Uh, there is a fund that they have over the next six years, about a $12 million state fund that uh, is geared to low to moderate incomes and also in conjunction with scrapping older cars that you can get an additional $2,500 U.S. added, uh, and that's on top of the original fund that's there. It's called the Charge Ahead Fund. Mm -hmm. um, so you can get a total incentive up, up to $5,000 U.S. And that uh, interesting about that, it's available to both new and used uh, cars. So obviously there's going to be a scale, but hey, it's not bad to be able to get some sort of incentive on a used car. 
So this is uh, over and above the federal tax credit? Over and above the federal tax credit. Okay. And we've talked about a lot of the states and, of course, here in Canada, provinces that have their own unique yeah. incentives um, that are, are, are specific to those areas. Mm-hmm. And this will go into effect for Oregon January 1st of next year, but you have six months to apply, so you can start now. Cool. So, so don't our, wait. Our, our folks there, if you're interested in taking advantage of that, please do. Um, back to Europe for a sec, Germany, we did talk about them a few months ago increasing their footprint from an EV perspective, looking to ban the sale of ICE cars as well in the 2020s or 2030s, something like that. Mm-hmm. Well, now there's uh, they're putting more EV charging stations. They're seeing the need for more infrastructure. So in partnership with the electric utility ENBW, they're going to deploy an additional 1,000 new EV uh, stations along the German Autobahn, which is the right place to do it because mm-hmm. that's where most most drivers are going. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is going to double the size of the existing charging network, and it should be done by 2020. And uh, most of those stations will be able to handle up to 150 kilowatt charge rates. So Excellent. pretty decent. And great to see Germany out on that. Let's jump uh, to our last category for today in the show, our manufacturer's update. Uh, we've got to say something about the Nissan Leaf. I know we the talked a little bit about the new one uh, that they finally came out with a release date. Excellent. September 5th, it looks like. September 5th. So it should be interesting. Uh, I'm still, you know, still got a soft spot for the Leaf. It was the one EV that we almost, we almost bought, you know, if it wasn't for the, the range. Yeah, we had a chance to drive one. We had the a EV chance. Drive that's right. Stuff. That mm-hmm. was the one, it, one that I hadn't driven. And, right. and you I thought it was that. all right. Yeah, I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. It's not the e-golf, but. <laughs> uh, well, that's my wife's decision. <laughs> that's that's your not mine. <laughs> exactly. But a decent car. And of course, the 2.0 reboot of the Leaf is expected to come out to, to be much uh, larger range, larger battery pack, maybe 60 kilowatt hour battery pack, over 200 plus mile range. That's the table stakes nowadays. That's EPA range. Uh, more autonomy. What are they calling it? Pro Pilot. Uh, Pro Pilot. Yeah. Uh, we talked about that in the last show. Uh, and they expect deliveries to start this fall. So if you know people that are interested, uh, maybe don't want to get into a Model 3, but want to look at a Leaf, this could be a good, good Looking option. Looking forward to seeing this car. Maybe yeah. at the auto show again. Yeah. We'll I go think back in February. That'd exactly. Be and we'll, we'll see some of that. And this is their biggest update since they've launched it in 2010. So that's it's a, been around for seven a, years. That's a long time. They were one of the pioneers as well in the EVs. Yeah, Give them some them. credit, right? You know, yeah. they just, the problem is they just stayed stagnant. They just stayed on it. And everybody, you know, caught up and surpassed him of course with tesla leading the way and a lot of the others so since you're more connected than me on the leaf mm-hmm. uh, does that mean that you can get some really good deals on the current model oh they're blowing them out right really now. So yeah, if you're looking for one might be a good time to get jump could, on yeah that. you can get some really good incentives i've even seen in the u.s some particular a city or state incentives and on top of it yeah. and then de- certain dealers trying to blow them out in nissan if you own an old nissan you can get a lot of money off something like that cool. so if you're interested in the older ones and it, you know 100 and I think it's just 100 miles, 105 miles, something like that, the current mm. range. Um, 170 to 200-ish kilometers. If you can live with that, then get a get a, a Leaf. Decent car. But it'll be interesting to see what it looks like. There's been some spy shots, but it's kind of hard to see. Yeah. Now, Volvo, there was some big news about Volvo. They're, are, they, they're doing a big leap of faith here in the EV market. They are planning to go electric. And what that, what that means is they plan to build only electric and hybrid vehicles starting in 2019. That's only a couple of years away. Um, they are really going, going to be the first major automaker to abandon cars or SUVs powered solely, and that's the key word, solely by internal combustion engines. It means they're not discontinuing the gasoline engines. They're adding electric motors or mm-hmm. electrification to their current vehicles. Right. So I know that this has been kind of misreported a lot. Mm-hmm. They're saying that they're going only electric. It's not. They're adding electrification to their current fleet of vehicles. Uh, but it's a step in the right direction. I believe personally, I mean, hybrids are hybrids. I mean, they're yeah. just a, a stopgap, but yeah, you have to start somewhere. So it's, And they uh, seem to be selling. The hybrids are still doing quite well. Yeah. You know, for Nothing wrong with the Volvos. They make a great car. They do make a nice car. And I forgot that they were, you know, they're based in Sweden, but they're owned by a Chinese company uh, called Geely. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, that happened so, a few years ago. Yeah. A few years ago. Hey, everybody's getting bought. <laughs> and uh, they also plan to launch five fully electric uh, cars, so battery electric version cars, between 2019 and 2021 under the Polestar Performance brand. So you can get more information on Isn't that. Isn't that interesting that most of these car manufacturers... Um, are launching different brands just to separate themselves. Mm-hmm. I mean, you got Mercedes with the EQ, EQ. And, and you know, and, mm-hmm. and Volkswagen. Uh, you know, they're and, doing yep. their own little thing on the side. Mm-hmm. So that's interesting. Staying with the European manufacturers, Porsche and BMW continue to deepen their EV commitments as well. Now, Porsche, uh, we talked about, I think, the Mission E concept a few months ago when that came out, probably late, later last year. Uh, but they plan to make 
uh, half of their lineup, which is pretty big news for Porsche as a performance-oriented car manufacturer, half its their lineup is going to be electric by 2023. That's not you know seven years away. Um, their all their all electric Mission E will start to hit market in a couple of years. They're estimating 310 miles. Uh, I think that's an NEDC range or. Is it N E D C or N D E C? I always get that mixed yeah, up. Yeah, I do too. But you know, we know the guys in Europe know what we're talking about. It's not yeah. an EPA range. Yeah. Uh, zero to sixty-three and a half seconds, eighty percent charge in fifteen minutes because they will be using an eight hundred volt charging system, and compared to Tesla's four hundred volt charging system, which well, I had it's to important to remember that. though too is that even though it's eight hundred volt and it can charge, doesn't mean you will be able to charge there. You'll have to go to very special charging That's stations right. in order to get that voltage. Mm-hmm. So most charging stations are usually topping out at uh, you know ninety kilowatt, hundred kilowatt, right. depending on where you go. No news whether these guys are adopting the supercharger thing because we heard recently that there's potentially that Tesla has been working mm-hmm. with some That's manufacturer. Right or manufacturers on adopting. We'll have to wait and see. It would make sense for these guys to jump on board. Oh, that would be fantastic if we, uh, we've had this comment more times, I think, than anything about us, some sort of standard charging infrastructure, standard connector. I mean, because there's just so many different types Well, it's the Wild West. It is a Wild West. And, uh, but Porsche's going to build about 20,000 of these uh, starting in that time. So pretty low volume. So low volume, but still significant enough. And uh, then they'll get into electrifying some of the SUVs, I guess, the the current uh, ones. Well, that's their big sellers, SUVs. Their big sellers. And then BMW, of course, is going to continue to electrify their vehicles and they're going to have all models having some sort of electrification by 2020, so only about three years. And we mm-hmm. talked about potentially in the last show the, an all EV, an all battery electric version of the 300 series. Uh, they'll have to do something. <laughs> they have to do something. Yes. The i3 is just not going to cut it, and the i8 is not going to cut it for them. So they, they got to add more. Yeah. And VW uh, almost can't do a show without mentioning those guys. Um, there was uh, some pictures that came out about their, their Gen E research prototype. Um, which could be the next generation e-golf. Now, e-golf has just kind of hit the market here in North America. Mm-hmm. It's been out in Europe for a bit. Um, nice car. You know, you, we saw it at the auto show. Mm-hmm. Um, you'll you'll probably drive one next next month or so. Get a look at it. Yeah. But they're saying the you know the next gen could be 250 mile plus EPA range and uh, see what happens. But that that looks more as the pictures that we saw. They look more like a reality than the ID concept did. I think right. Yeah, I mean, the ID concept is nice, but as we all know, that those cars that are show cars or concepts never make it to production, never look like that. They're always dumbed down. This mm-hmm. car looks more production than anything else because mm-hmm. it's a little, little bit of a mix of that. So uh, it wouldn't surprise me that this is probably indicative of what the IQ mm-hmm. uh, might end up looking like. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll see. But uh, this one looks nice. Interesting that blue, uh, you know, I, I think blue is trendy now. <laughs> blue, is the, blue is the new black, yeah. I guess, or new red. I'm not I sure. Know. Something like that. Nice. And Volkswagen is continuing uh, their $2 billion investment in the U.S. Uh, with regard to EV infrastructure uh, because of the Dieselgate settlements under their Electrify America campaign. They're starting with another 50, 50 kilowatt stations. Uh, in so 50 10, times 50, 50 stations. times 50 okay. stations yeah. uh, to start with in 10 major metro markets in the U.S. And uh, you'll see more of their money coming into those infrastructures. As and just remember, goes. it's 50 kilowatts. So it's not, right. not, not supercharger right. level, right. but it's still better than level two. But if it's Chatamo, you got an adapter and you can plug in and take a couple hours and well, go walk Volks- somewhere. Well, Volkswagen actually yeah. uses CCS. CCS, But right. keep in mind, most mm-hmm. of those stations that you charge at that are like that have both. That's right. So take your pick. Yeah. And one thing I wanted to, to mention before we go to the mailbag is uh, the CBC article that just came out uh, a few days ago. Uh, CBC is our national broadcaster here in Canada. There was a website article that Trevor was called to uh, interview All on. All right. Yeah, so appreciate that. It was dawn of the electric car era. And Trevor, you discussed the Model 3 influence in the articles about a whole bunch of different things, about Tesla, Volvo, BMW, all this, all these manufacturers uh, you know, uh, that are getting into the EV game. But mm-hmm. it was interesting to see your take on that and really reconfirm what we kind of already know. Yeah, they just right. they just wanted to reach out because of the news about the first Model 3 uh, mm-hmm. serial number one coming out on the Friday and stuff. So they just wanted to kind of tie in with that. But yeah, I, I, I mean... They just wanted my take on things, and yeah. I just kind of reiterated that. In a lot of ways, the Model 3, from a public's perspective, is kind of like an iPhone type of moment. And that's yep. basically the quote that I used and stuff. So uh, time will tell, that's see if that's that's true or not. But uh, there's certainly a lot of eyeballs at the end of the month on this reveal event. So A lot of people looking at it. Yep. One thing we did want to announce on the show is that we, we do have now a date and location set for our next GTA. That's Greater Toronto Area. I mean, 
you want to drive from California, please come on up. <laughs> You're more than welcome. But yeah. for our folks that are a little bit more local, we're doing another meetup. The date for that is Wednesday, August the 16th. And the time will be 6 to 9 p.m. local here in Toronto. And the location will be at the Electric Vehicle Discovery Center. Um, and we'll supply address if you need to. You can, you can Google it and look it up. But uh, we just did a video a few episodes ago, I think it was 19, mm -hmm. and we did a tour of that, and uh, they were nice enough to uh, let us use their facility. It's an excellent facility. There's mm -hmm. lots of parking, there's charging, yep. uh, there's a great meeting room, uh, so we will bring amenities and some food and some drinks. Yep. So we highly encourage anybody who's in the GT and stuff. No so, alcohol, but no, <laughs> we can't do so, that. Yeah, so yep. we'll put more of the details on our forum. So mm -hmm. don't forget to you know to go to the Model Three Owners Club, and then uh, we'll put the details on there. Uh, we wanted to coincide this a little bit, right. you know, as close as we could to the final delivery event, so that we had something to talk about and try to strike when the iron's hot. So uh, yeah. So that's what we uh, that's, that's what we're going to do, and yeah. it's a great center, and uh, they may even have some staff to offer some drives in some of their demo units if yeah, you want. Absolutely, well. yeah, that's the other mm -hmm. thing too. Ken's yeah. absolutely right. If you've never driven an EV and you just want to hop in a car, uh, come a little bit earlier, yeah. and um, even during the day if you want, and and check out the various vehicles that they have there. And you can take them for a test drive, absolutely free, no obligation yeah. because they don't sell the cars. They got a so Bolt, they got a Leaf, they've got Volt. Well, you can't take the Tesla. They got a Volt. Yeah. Um, I think I'm missing one. I think, um, else. They, I think they said they're going to have, have an, an e golf, I3? an e golf, yeah, and an i three, an i three. So, so yeah, check yeah, it out. Got a good range. But thanks for our friends at the EVDC Electric Vehicle for us letting us use their facility. Thanks, Dab. Should, should be a lot of fun. Thanks, Dab. Shout out. It's mailbag time. Mailbag time. Da -da -da. So what do we have on what tap have? today? Just a couple of mails because we've been pretty good at answering a lot of questions, I guess. Nobody's emailing us uh, <laughs> too much. I think more stuff comes from comments in the forum now. Sure. Uh, but there is a question from Scott. Uh, Scott doesn't say where he's from. Uh, just a recent email. He's asking about the charge port door in the Model 3. Mm. And he says, is the door for the charge port going to be completely manual? Uh, because I think on... Uh, the S and the X, it's automatic, right? If it is a proximity now. sensor or a button you push. Yeah, it so. is now. Mm -hmm. uh, What's your that's take a, on that? You know what? That's a really good question. Um, there's two ways to think about that. One of them is that for simplicity nature, it'd be completely you know manual uh, just to keep the cost down. But the other factor too, and it keeps getting brought up, of course, in comments on Twitter and stuff, is how does it work with the fully autonomous system that they plan on doing? So the snake, right? Yeah, well, stuff, right? whatever they mm -hmm. want to, you know, whatever right. they decide to do. So my personal take on this is, at the very least, the door should be spring-loaded. So when you press open, it'll just kind of pop mm -hmm. open. Whether it self-closes or not, we don't know. It could be, it may not. However, uh, one thing that I do know is that if they end up using the snake charger that they... Maybe I'll put a video behind us, you know, to mm -hmm. creep everybody out. Yeah, that's pretty neat. <laughs> um, if they end up using that snake charger thing to actually plug it, uh, plug itself into the car, that there's no reason why they couldn't kind of program some kind of move so it, it could actually close the port by itself. Because let's mm -hmm. face it, uh, mm -hmm. the paint robots in the factory actually open and close the doors and the hoods on the vehicle when they actually paint it. So there's nothing preventing them from doing something like that. So we'll, we'll have, hopefully we'll have more information, you know, post delivery event to be able to answer some of those things. So, but it's a good question. Thanks. Thanks for the question. And we have another question from Finland. This is Pekka, who's from Finland. He's saying, hello. Hey, how are you? Great. Thanks for the email. Thank you. He's asking, again, charging related. What's our, our take on the charging port of the Model 3? Do we think that there's any possibility that there could be uh, two connectors, like a UMC and a CCS under that big cover? It seems to be that there could be room for it. They don't have the ring anymore and all this kind of stuff. And he's mm -hmm. seen some shots with Model 3s on a CCS channel station, but uh, they were they may not have been charging. So uh, what's your take on that? Uh, that's another very good question. Yes, of course, since we've been seeing the, the charge port on the Model 3 being physically larger because it actually encompasses the whole taillight rather than just the section. Mm -hmm. um, look, all I can say at this point is every one of the release candidates we've seen charging, the charge port's right dead center. It's not off center. If it was off center, maybe there might be something there. Um, Tesla already makes a Chatamo adapter. Right. And all of the charging stations I've ever seen that have Chatamo have both CCS and Chatamo. So, and I haven't seen any that are just one or just the other. So if they already make one adapter and the charging station's 50 kilowatt, why would you make another adapter? Just buy the Chatamo and just call it done. Mm -hmm. So uh, anything is possible, but at this point, I'm I'm just gonna go on my gut instinct on this and, and say that what we've seen on the release candidates is what we're getting. It will have Great. a standard Tesla charge port. Now in North America, it's different than what they use in Asia and Europe. Mm -hmm. In Europe, they use the type two 
minor keys connector and that's generally what those will have because it's a standard mm -hmm. keep in mind the, the, the model 3 can supercharge so if you're going to use the superchargers you have to use the same connectors everybody else because you're not going to go to the superchargers and change all the connectors and retrofit all the model s's and model x's right. out there that's does it does that does not happen mm -hmm. So the Teslas will come with the, at least a standard uh, Tesla connector for whatever country you happen to be in. And if you want to use another one, you'll just have to buy the adapter. So, Before we get to how, how people can reach us, we want to talk about our friends at EV Annex again and the promo. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, here's the book again. Uh, mm -hmm. I just want to give another shout out for those of you who don't know. This is the book. It's called Getting Ready for Module, uh, for Model 3. It's written by Roger Pressman. And uh, the guys at EV Annex have a nice promo. So if you use the promotion code GR4M3, get ready for Model 3, just in short. G4, when, no yeah, R. Yeah, yeah. G, uh, no, no, it's, it, you're, you're missing it. Am on, I? On the thing. Oh, yeah, I keep missing G4. the R? Okay. <laughs> it's G, uh, yeah, it's GR4M3. Okay. Um, make sure you use that code when you finally check out, because when you put the book in your shopping cart, there's an actual little checkbox on there that says mm -hmm. add the, the license plate frame. Mm -hmm. Make sure you do that. It'll add the license plate frame. And then we use the coupon code, it discounts the license plate frame. So it's a $10 nice. value. Nice. Just pay for shipping and uh, you get the book. It's a really good book. It's about 140 pages long. Um, if you don't already own an EV, we'll give you lots of information on charging and what makes a car go and general observations about the Model 3. So yeah, I enjoy reading this. I, re I really got to sit down. And yeah, read it was it again, a really so. good book. And uh, that's why I've started to kind of reread it again now that things are, are becoming more fruition than, than just speculation. Yeah. I'll so, just put another yeah. shout out because yesterday I had a really uh, nice long conversation with Matthew at uh, at um, at, uh, at EvanX again. Mm -hmm. Uh, just re, uh, just talking about our commitment again to work with these folks in the future, in the, in the near future when the Model Three comes out. So we'll have some product reviews to talk about mm -hmm. uh, when they're ready with some Model Three products and stuff. So stay tuned for that. So uh, again, Matthew, if you're watching, yeah. thanks for reaching out again. Uh, thanks for looking your support. Forward to, yeah, oh. looking forward to uh, to working with you. So Absolutely. so how, how can people uh, people reach well, us? Well, email is the best way as we we get those emails. We love seeing them. So please email us at m 3 ocshow at gmail dot com. And of course, yeah. there's Twitter. Yeah, you can follow me on Twitter. My handle is at model three owners and ken's is at kenneth bacor yeah and congrats on ten thousand was it 10, oh, yeah 000? yeah i reached yeah. Uh, ten thousand well it's actually it's almost eleven thousand now <laughs> blow the horn for you there right? yeah well you know let's keep going it's keep a, lots going. of fun uh don't forget you can check us out on our forum yeah. at uh, model three owners club.com we also have a uh, facebook page and i don't have the ac actual link but you can just search for it uh, mm -hmm. we're, we're getting new members fast. joining up every day so we really yeah, appreciate that great. try to cross post a lot of the stuff that yeah. we're putting out on there so mm -hmm. uh yeah different social media we do have i do have an instagram thing you just look up model three owners you're on instagram now. yeah yeah oh, i'm yeah. posting a few pictures on there too. I haven't figured out that one yet so i'm still <laughs> working on twitter and of course youtube's great for following us following the show and subscribing to the show and looking at the channel and the videos you put up and, and that we do the the joint shows and other things together so please subscribe to that and you can tell them about our patreon yeah we have a patreon campaign and you can find that at patreon.com forward slash model three owners club and uh we appreciate it if you take a look at the page if you mm -hmm. if you'd like to uh, sponsor and help us out a little bit it helps pay for all this equipment and the green screen and keep the show going and just handle some expenses hard drives yeah. oh my gosh <laughs> airfare uh, oh airfare <laughs> well yeah. we'll see about that we'll but, uh, see hopefully we get our but we, we, appreci we yeah. appreciate all of our patreon uh, subscribers yeah. and uh, and pledgers and stuff and uh, we do. you know Thank those you those much. folks uh, for this show get your early access to the show or, uh, a day early and stuff yeah. so we really appreciate everyone uh, subscribing to that so yeah and thanks for all our viewers and uh, and subscribers you know I know uh, we'd like to get that 100,000 silver <laughs> button star what got is a little it? work Something to like do that. but uh, we're getting we're, we're creeping we're getting up there but we really appreciate you guys following us and subscribing watching the show and putting comments so thank you very much so well that's, that's it for it. today yeah great show so on behalf of myself kenneth bacor and trevor thanks yeah. a lot for watching we'll catch you on the next one thanks, thanks for, watching, for watching folks take care bye, bye. Thank you.